Once in a lifetime It doesn't make sense So why should we stay If you are with me Once in a lifetime. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Luis Chavez. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based out of Southern California. And if you read the title of this video, you know that it's about the Ricoh GR3. And the reason I'm making this video is I know a lot of people are interested in this camera, even though it's a three-year-old camera, because, you know, the, I mean, with a variety of factors, you know, the rise of film, people are looking for that film-like form factor and I know that we're looking for it in the Fujifilm X100V which has been out of stock everywhere for a long time and the used ones that you do find it's like two times the price so I know people are looking for that small form factor and I know I've seen a couple of videos on the Ricoh GR3 on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter so I just wanted to make this video for anybody who's interested in what it's like to own this camera I've had this camera for three years so I, I feel like I know it pretty well I've taken some of my favorite photos on it it has a great sensor so I just want to give an overview of what it's like to own it for three years and you know the good and the bad and what you should be looking out for if you're looking to buy this camera. The build quality in this camera is actually pretty nice. It's not made out of metal or anything like that, but the materials that they use, they do feel premium and it doesn't feel like it's gonna break. The only part that makes me a little nervous is this dial right here. Um, I know after a while, some of these dials can get a little bit loose. The other annoying part is this ring. It comes off really easily and I've never lost it before. It's still my original one, but it doesn't take much force to get it off of here. So if you're clumsy or you lose track of things, Things, um, that might be a deal breaker for you or it might be something to consider but yeah if you put very little force on it you can come off, it comes off very easily so if you're you know like to customize it they do sell these in different colors so I know some people like to um, put rings to different colors and stuff like that I like it stock but it is an option for you so one of the best things about the Ricoh GR3 is its size. As you can tell, it's a very small camera, even compared to the Fujifilm X100V. I did a review on it a couple years ago. I don't have it on me, but it's a little bit bigger than this. And if you compare with, you know, the lens sizes, it's a lot, a lot bigger. So even when the lens is fully out, it's very compact. And something that you can compare it to is a similar pocket size camera. It's like a RX100. This is a Sony RX100 Mark V. As you can tell, they're very similar in size, but the key difference is that this is an APS-C size sensor and this is a one inch sensor. The images you would get out of Sony RX100 Mark V, they're still great, but it's more comparable to something you would get out of a cell phone. And with the Ricoh is, you know, you can compare it more to um, X100V or any other Fujifilm camera or any camera that has APS-C size sensors. So if you're doing anything like street photography or you like taking candid photos or even taking this camera on vacation, this is great because if you're out there shooting, you don't have to worry about people looking at you weird or um, you know disturbing a scene because you're taking pictures with a larger camera. You can take as many pictures as you want and people won't look at you because they assume either this is just a point and shoot or that um, you know, you're just a tourist. So it's really, really useful if in those kinds of situations. And not, it's not just small, but it's really silent. So if you're taking photos, People will probably not hear you, as you can tell. You know, I'm gonna take a couple shots and you see if you can hear it. I'll put it right next to the microphone here. And that's the shutter. So if you are out and about taking random pictures, people are not gonna look at you because they probably can't hear it. And not just that, the lens is actually really, really good. It's super sharp. It's a 28 millimeter focal length. So if you're familiar with that, if you have some experience with that specific focal length, this is right in your wheelhouse. I know um, people tend to like to go wider or a lot tighter for a camera, but if you are familiar with what 28 millimeters can do, it's a really versatile lens. So if you want to still want to take those really cool uh, close-up uh, portraits or candids out on the, on the street, you can still do that. But if you want to take uh, more of a wider and more of a landscape type of shot, you can do that as well. So it takes a little bit of practice and it's not for everybody, but uh, I've been able to... Uh, learn a lot with the 28 millimeter. I, before this camera or before the 28 millimeter lens, I used to shoot a lot with 35 or even 50 because I'm a primarily a wedding photographer. So 
I was really used to those focal lengths, but this uh, lens really helped me grow my skills a little bit more and be able to find compositions that are a little bit wider. And, you know, it makes me not rely so much on a zoom lens. So yeah, if you're really trying to grow your skills and to kind of see what like more of a prime kind of feel of view is, this is a great lens. The lens in this camera is actually really good for macro shots, surprisingly. So even though this is the tiny camera, you can still take macro shots with it. And I don't take tons of macro um, photos with this camera, but occasionally I do like to take pictures of close-up things like, you know, like uh, flowers or anything like that. So if that's something that interests you, it's very handy to have in this camera. This camera also has a great menu system. It's very simple. There's not that many pages. So if you're looking to change anything, you're most likely going to find it very easily. And if you're looking to even have settings done even quicker, there's a sub menu that you can access with this lever here on the camera and you can customize it and put whatever um, menu that you want to access quickly. And for mine, I have the focus. I have the type of metering for a um, particular scene I have. Um, what file format, sometimes I want to shoot in RAW, sometimes I want to shoot both, or sometimes just in JPEG. And I also like to switch out, you know, my uh, brightness in my viewfinder, depending on whether I'm inside or outside. So it's very useful and it's, you get used to it very quickly. And although the menu on the Ricoh GR3 is very simple, it's actually pretty robust because you can even do things like edit raw images here right on the camera. So you can apply different picture profiles. You can raise or lower the exposure. Um, even play with the contrast. So even if you want to do things right out of the camera and export it into a JPEG, you're able to do it right on camera and then transfer it to your phone or your computer and play around with those files even more. So if you're, especially if you're shooting raw and JPEG, you can play with those JPEGs, but also have the raw footage, uh, the raw file to, you know, further um, color correct it or, you know, do your editing on post. The Ricoh GR3 is also jam-packed with features, even things I don't even use, like snap to focus. So if you want to focus even more quickly, you can predetermine your focus distance. So let's say you want to uh, focus in one meter, and when you press the shutter button, it just focuses to one meter. It's already predetermined. So if you want to take pictures out on, like if you do a lot of street photography, it's very helpful. That way you just get a quick snap and you don't disturb anything, and you are just move on to the next thing. If you do a lot of shooting at night, this also has image stabilization built right in. So that means you can handhold your shots without having to use a tripod to get nice and sharp results. And even if you're doing things like dragging your shutter, you still get that nice sharp um, focus on your subject without having to you know, use anything else. And it's really, really handy if you wanna start experimenting at night without having to bring a lot of gear with you. One thing I really like about the Ricoh GR3, it's the ability to get the pictures right out of the camera into your phone. I know most modern cameras can do that, pretty easily, but most of those apps are really bad. So, you know, and that includes Sony and Fuji and even Leica. The Leica app I actually really like a lot, but it's even that it's a little bit slower. So the app that I use for the Ricoh camera, it's not even made by Ricoh. It's called um, GR Viewer and it's right on the app store. I'm not sure if uh, the Android has a version of it, but if you look for it in the Apple store, you can find it very easily. And once you install it, and you follow their instructions on how to get the pictures out of it, it's really easy and you can get both the JPEGs and the RAWs. And so if you wanna share anything right from your phone, you're more than uh, able to do that. No camera is perfect. So the, I think the biggest weakness in this camera is actually its battery life. You need uh, uh, tons of batteries to operate this camera. So I usually just run with one battery, but it's because I have a battery bank with me and I don't like to carry more things than I need. I already carry a battery bank, so it, it fits perfect, but you will get close to 200 shots maybe with this camera. And even if you keep the camera just on, it will drain your battery some more. So what I usually like to do is turn off like Bluetooth or uh, Wi-Fi, anything like that. I just turn those things off. I don't usually, usually use them all the time. So if I can conserve battery, I like to do it as much as possible. But if you're someone that shoots a lot, you're gonna need a couple of batteries with you at all times. Another thing to note, this camera is not weather sealed and it's not dust resistant. And I've seen enough reports that I feel like I need to talk about the dust in the sensor. Um, people have reported that after a while they do see some dust spots on the sensor, especially if you are um, shooting in higher f-stops, like f-16 or something like that. So if you're somebody that's um, weary of that kind of thing, um, I will be careful with this camera. And But one thing to note, I've had this camera for over three years. I put it in my pocket, I put it in bags with no case. I take it everywhere with me and I still have no dust in the sensor. So I don't know if it's just my unit being lucky or anything like that, but I've seen enough that people talk about it that I feel like uh, it's something to look out for. 
This camera also doesn't have a viewfinder, so if you like to compose with a viewfinder, you're not gonna find it in that. It takes a little bit to get used to if you are, you know, used to putting your camera up to your eye, but after a while, you know, with small compact cameras like this, you don't usually get it anywhere. And if you do, it's tiny. So it's not something that I necessarily use all the time, but if you, you're you used to that, um, that's something to note. The screen is also not very bright and with the issues with the battery, um, you know, I don't think they can make it any brighter without making the battery life even worse, but it is very responsive. So if you like to use touch screens a lot, this is very responsive for that. So if you wanna use this to touch the focus, or if you wanna drag your focus uh, point around, this is very great for that. This camera can technically shoot video, but I wouldn't, the image quality in this is horrific for video. So I even disabled it. So there's like an, a dedicated video button right here and I don't know if it'll focus on it, but um, this camera actually takes video. It's not very good. I wouldn't use it. You're way better off using your phone. So I would turn that off immediately. And if this is something that's a kind of a deal breaker, yeah, uh, the video is not very good out of this. So in the past, when I talk about cameras, I tend to talk about accessories, but I think honestly, the best thing about the Ricoh GR3 is that it's so small. So putting it in a case or anything that might bulk it up, it kind of defeats the purpose of having such a small camera. So I wouldn't recommend anything in particular as an accessory, except for like three or four batteries if you're shooting with this all day long. But other than that, I think the Ricoh GR3 is an excellent camera. It's still my favorite compact camera. It allows me to get shots that I wouldn't otherwise get. And you know, I think if you are already familiar with the focal length, my 28 millimeter focal length, this will be right around your wheelhouse. So if you have like something like a, uh, like a Q2, Ricoh GR3, they were both 28 millimeters. Although the, the Leica Q2 is more of a 26, if we're being honest. But if you're like that focal length, if you're used to something like this and then you wanna add the Ricoh GR3 to your kit, for times you don't wanna carry around a bigger camera, especially a Q2 or like a Sony or anything like that. I think this is an excellent camera if you're like a stickler for image quality or if you just want something that's a bigger sensor than your phone, this is an excellent camera. And I would recommend it to anybody who is interested in this camera, at least to try it out. You know, if you can buy it, I would go for it. But if you can rent it, that's an even better idea. So thank you so much for watching this week's video. I haven't made a video in like a year. So this is my first video back. So I'm a little bit rusty, but if you have any questions or comments about this camera or any other camera, please leave them in the comment section below. And yeah, I would love to talk to you guys down in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.